Okay, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Um, I've already started the recording so it doesn't matter if um, we don't have a full class. I'm hoping that as time passes then we'll get more numbers. Okay, so um, welcome to JIS1003. Uh, my name is um, Abdullah Al-Hadi Amal Fuad. I have a very short name um, written there. Okay, just Hadi Fuad. Um, I am the course coordinator for this course and um, we are supposed to meet two weeks ago. However, it was, what was it? Um, it was a public holiday um, on, on the previous Thursday, a uh, Tuesday. So we didn't have any class. So your first class was with Dr. Mas um, last week and, um, you know, uh, we'll just get going and we will see where we go. Okay. All right, just a little bit about me. Um, that's my name. This is my office. So in case if you are in UM or around UM and um, you want to, you know, discuss about something with me, you can always drop by. You're welcome to drop by to my office anytime. Um, I'll always be here. Okay, for those who, of course, most of you probably don't know where is the building. Um, you can either first just use Google Map and Google Bangunan Amal Kimia and, and you know you, you will see the map over here. Or for those who do know where is the Faculty of Science, okay, it's very near to um, Dana Siswa. But this building, the building that I'm sitting right now, is so far away, it's uh, at the very end of um, the Faculty of Science. So if you walk from Dana Siswa to here, probably it'll take you about 10 minutes or 15 minutes, depending on how fast you walk, okay? Um, I did my degree as a Bachelor of uh, Biotechnology in Chemistry, so I know a little bit about biology and um, I majored in chemistry. So I did my degree way back in 2010, so about 11 years ago. Um, and then following that, I straight away continued my PhD um, and completed my PhD in 2015. Okay? And then um, I stayed a little bit in Australia. I worked there for a while, not as fruit picker. Okay, I work in, in the research field, in the research in, um, institute until 2017 and I came back to Malaysia and I joined UM. Okay, uh, I joined UM since 2018 um, until today. Okay, so um, if you are interested in, you know, talking about anything about science, especially because you guys are not from science, you are welcome to either go and visit my website, um, look at what I have, what I'm doing as a research, um, and, um, you know, um, if you want to visit me, just come by and visit me at my office. Okay. So this is just a picture of me, um, back in Harvard, uh, about two years ago, um, just prior to COVID-19, all this scenario. So before that, I went to the U S uh, I work with a marvelous, um, team over here. So we have, uh, over here is, uh, Prof. Joe. Um, and then this one is Dr. Dr. Ramon. Why double doctor is a veterinarian at the same time he has a PhD. So no, just for a joke, uh, Dr. Doctor and these two are medical doctors. Okay, and you can see it's a very lovely team. Um, I'm very happy to be able to work with them. All right, so a little bit about the lecture information. Um, I'm sure Dr. Mas Mira have already mentioned this to you guys, but this is just a recap. So every odd weeks will be with me, while every even weeks you will have your lecture with Dr. Masmira. Okay, so now we are on week three, so that's why you are with me. Next week will be with Dr. Masmira, and we will just alternate. Um, so why do we need to alternate? Um, even though sometimes you know it's easier to just do one lecture and then finish everything, and then second lecture. Um, this is because in the second cycle, which is week eight until week fourteen. Both me and Dr. Masmira will be very busy handling our laboratory. So um, in chemistry, we do have not just lectures, we do have work in the chemistry lab. So uh, in our second um, cycle, we will be very busy with the laboratory. So Dr. Mas is like asking me if we can alternate so that um, in our second cycle, none of us will be very busy with having lectures to focus on and also um, lab. Okay. All right, so um, something that you need to know is, I'm not sure whether your lecturers in your faculty um, are doing this or not, but for me, 
I'm trying my best to adapt technologies, to adopt technologies uh, for all my lectures. So that's why you can see, I can now chonteng here and chonteng there. Um, I'm hoping that everybody is in Malaysian. If not, uh, probably uh, chonteng means like just scribbling. Okay. Um, so um, I'm using my iPad to draw. Okay. At the same time, you'll be involving in this lecture by, um, you know, trying to answer some questions that I'm asking during the lecture by downloading um, Poll Everywhere app. Okay, so if you're using Android or if you, if you are using iOS, you can just straight away now go to your mobile phone, um, go to your store and then just Google Poll Everywhere. You should be able to see the app. Um, if I'm mistaken, the color is blue. Okay, so download the app, um, just be ready and then um, at one point, uh, I will ask questions and then you can give your feedback. So this is not just a lecture whereby you just sit and do nothing. You, for all you know, <laughs> some of you are sleeping over there or eating something. I have no idea. Um, but um, this is one way for me to do an interaction. So I know some lecturers like to just finish all the lectures and then give you guys tasks and then you need to do it. But for me, I don't really prefer to do tasks outside of the lecture hours. Um, we just focus everything during the lecture hours, especially for this course because we have two hours, two straight um, hours for this lecture. So um, that's why um, for today's lecture, um, we'll just go, we're going to do the straight lecture and then um, the poll everywhere. But um, in the next coming lectures, what I will do is normally um, the revision of the lecture from this week will be covered as a poll everywhere on the following lecture plus some other um, questions as well, okay? All right, so attendance link. Um, I have an attendance link posted on um, the spectrum, okay? Uh, but please do not do not sign in or, or, you know, submit the form prior to the lecture. So make sure it's above 11 or at least close to 11. Um, I had someone who actually submitted their attendance at 9.30. So I will just delete it, okay? Because I'm sure you guys know Google Form, there's a timestamp, uh, date and timestamp. So if you attended, if you attended the lectures way earlier, I will just delete and I will consider you to be absent, okay? All right, so if you have your phone, you can just QR scan that QR code. Um, you can scan the QR code and then you go to the Google form, just key in your email address and um, student ID, then that's all I need. Okay, so um, if you have not seen the link on Spectrum, then scan it. Otherwise, you can just use the link on Spectrum. Okay, now um, this is the last week by which we are requesting students to give a feedback in the sense of um, entry survey. So this survey is very beneficial for us to look at students' background and how you progress throughout the semester, okay? So we normally have two surveys. One is entrance survey. The other one is exit survey. Um, this survey is purposely for uh, the use of the Department of Chemistry. Uh, and therefore, this survey will not be shared with anybody else. We will not use it for any publication and so on, okay? So this is just for the sake of um, trying to improve the way we give out our lectures, okay? Right, and if you look at the um, spectrum, you will have, you will see this, like you know, um, there's a virtual link room. So in case if you forget where to get the email address or the, the link to this Google Meet from, so you can just go to um, the spectrum and see it there, or you can always, um, and, and the attendance link is also there. Okay, and then I'll have all the lecture notes listed down here. So for, for so far, I only posted lecture one. Um, by the, well, hopefully Thursday is public holiday. So probably at the end of Thursday, I will post lecture two and so on. Okay, so just for this week, it's a bit late because um, I'm still juggling about different lectures and so on. Okay, oops, next one. All right, so all lectures will be online and synchronous, so there won't be any offline lectures, there won't be any recording that you need to view, but all lectures, as you can see now, uh, are actually recorded. So um, by the end of this lecture, I will post the recorded link 
on Spectrum. So if you want to review the lecture or, you know, just confirm anything uh, because what you'll see from my notes today and your notes will be totally different. There are some things that I took out purposely for your lectures so that during the lectures, you will need to, you know, at least involve and, and write something. Okay. All right. So these are all the dates for my lecture, my lectures, and that one is for Dr. Masmira. Okay. So um, make sure you look at the dates in case if you missed it. Um, these are the dates. And um, on the last week, which is week 13, okay, this one is week 13, uh, we'll be having our quiz. Okay, We probably have like, um, it depends on whether we manage to cover all the lecture materials. If we did manage, if we do manage to cover all the lecture materials, then on week 13, what I will do is for the first hour of the lecture, you will do your quiz. And then for the second hour of the lecture, we will discuss on the um, answers for the quiz. Okay. Uh, but if we did not manage, if we do not manage to cover all the lecture materials and the first hour of the um, lecture slot, I'm hoping that we will cover all the remaining materials. And then for the second half, we will do your quiz. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, if that's the case, then I will just post a summary like um, a summary of what would be the answer for the quiz. I will just post it and then if you are interested in looking at the answers, then you can just review the recording. Okay. Uh, doctor, sorry Finally, to interrupt you. Uh, some, yes. My, my friends want to enter the Google Meet, so, uh, but you didn't, didn't accept yet. Um, there's no... Is it? There's, yeah, there's, there's nothing here. Uh, okay, so probably your friend is already in. Uh, he doesn't enter yet, but maybe wrong link. But I send him the the, okay. the another link. Okay. Right. So because um probably that's him or there's two more person. <laughs> okay, because what happened is uh for my Google Meet it's a, it's actually auto accept, so I don't need to touch anything. So that's why you can see my hands keep on moving, but then people keep on entering and exiting. So um, I'm using automated system so that it will auto accept anyone who tries to enter the um, room. Okay, so moving back to this slide, um, your, for your final exam, for your summative assessment, um, I have yet to decide whether to have a final exam as in final exam during your final semester during the exam week, or um, we will be, we you will do um, a summative assessment in the sense that, you know, an assignment that you need to write and submit. Okay, so I haven't decided on that um, because the uh, university have yet to finalize um, whether we can do, you know, different type of exams and so on. Okay, um, I'm hoping that by the fifth week, so in the next two weeks, in the next hour, our next lecture, I'll be able to finalize whether I'll be doing a final, final exam during the final week or you need to submit the um, assessment by week 14, okay? All right, so now we go, now we are going into the lecture. So the learning outcome, so we have three learning outcomes for this course. The first one is uh, for you guys to be able to explain the basic atoms, um, basic atoms and elements that are important in daily life. Of course, I'm hoping that all of you guys have um, basic science background from your high school, um, or at least from metrics, you should be able to have that. So lecture one will be like very easy, very straightforward. It's kind of like a refresher. Um, but as we go on, then we'll see more examples, more detailed examples um, about, you know, chemistry in your daily life, okay? So um, the first one, the first learning outcome or LO1 is to explain, for you to be able to explain what are atoms, elements, mixtures, compounds, and so on and so forth, okay? And then second one, identify the connection between molecules um, that occurs naturally, statically, uh, that mostly in air, ground, organism, and analysis of these components. So these are um, what you will see in the week five, okay? Week five and, and forward. And then we will discuss a little bit about the role of analgesic, drugs, stimulants, and their derivative, as well as sex and reproduction. Um, and the consequences of their presence in living creatures. So we'll look at how these things involve or, or related to chemistry. Okay. Um, again, so this is my lecture style for those who have missed it. 
Um, I'll be using embedded tutorial questions. So please download this, download this app. So you can just Google poll everywhere um, from the either Apple store or uh, Play store. Okay. Um, and if you don't want to download because you don't want to waste your bandwidth, you can always go to open your browser Okay, go to pollf.com um, and then you, know, you can do pollf.com and then once you open the, the, the website, you just key in this ID for art 049, then you can participate in the um, tutorial. Okay. Um, then you can press skip if you want to be anonymous or if you don't want to be anonymous, you can just key in your name. Um, I think it's fine. I don't, I don't really mind. Okay. So I'll, something that, that I want is I, I'm expecting everyone to participate because uh, I spent time to prepare this and, and hoping that you guys will also spend some of your time during the lectures because this is during the lecture hours um, to actually participate. Okay. All right. Let's have a go. Let's try this. So if you open your full F app uh, and key in this um, name, okay, Hadi for Art 049, or um, you can just go to the full email address here. Okay, you should be able to see the first question. Um, in one word, how are you guys today? Okay, so we have someone who said fine. Um, I'm hoping that more people will participate so that I can see whether you guys are actually listening to whatever I'm talking or you just, you guys are doing something else. Okay, come on, do it. So go to pollf.com forward slash hadi for art 049. Um, and only get one response. Come on, guys. Come on, come on. This is for you. Um, uh, doctor, from me, I only see the which faculty are you from? Oh, wait, that's the second question. <laughs> Let me see. Um, let me just read it. Oh, okay, that's why. I don't know what happened. Okay. All right. So it should change now, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I can see already. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so um, this is how, how it will be for all the tutorials and whatnot. So this one is just kind of like a, a play around. Um, but uh, as we go, or, or at least by the end of this lecture, you will see more questions related to the lecture. Okay, so this is just part of it. Okay, so how many responses are there now? Let me refresh a little bit. Dun, dun, dun. Oops, sorry, mumbling. It says I have one response. Okay, all right. So that's that's pretty, pretty much it. Um, well, fortunately, there are 40 of you um, and the maximum feedback that I can receive, maximum responses that I can receive is also 40. So um, individually, you should be able to uh, participate and, you know, <laughs> someone is hungry. <laughs> okay, all right. So we'll go to the next one. Which faculty are you from? No, wait. <laughs> um, you, you can you can delete and, and remove your hungry surviving and so on and so forth. Okay. Oh, well, that's from pharmacy. So for you, probably it will be like very, very easy. Um, I'm hoping that you guys will score 100%. Okay. Engineering faculty, uh, we have FAB, science, we have science. Uh, we have arts, business, what else there? F C S I T. I'm not sure what that one is. Business, business. Okay. So um I probably should have put another question. Um do you have chemistry background? But never mind. We'll just go. Okay. So throughout the lecture, you can just stop me anytime if you want me to re-explain. Um for those who have um chemistry background, then you will see that if you can still recall, um, you will see that the topic that is being covered at least for today and the next um, weeks are kind of like very basic. So this one is more on introductory to chemistry instead of 
um, learning high level chemistry. Okay, but um, I'm hoping that at least you will learn one thing or two. Okay, so engineering wins. Congratulations. Okay, all right, that's the end for that one. Uh, we will continue more pull, um, uh, pull F thingy, um, probably in the after one hour or so. Okay, so the topics that will be covered. Um, so part one is by me. Part two is uh by Dr. Masmira. So I'm not gonna touch about part three at all. So part one we have module one, uh, which is introduction. One X here means just one lecture. So uh for week five for for the module two there will be week five and week seven. And then for module three, uh, five, seven, it will be week nine and part of week 10. Oh, sorry, week 11. And then this one is week 11. Why is it week 11? Oh, probably I got my week wrong. But um, I hope that you, you uh, get the gist, okay? So uh, for the introductory, you will learn or you will refresh your memory about what are atoms, what are elements, compounds, mixtures, um, a few types of chemical bonds and then what defines organic or inorganic okay so sometimes you go to a shopping mall or, or to the market especially and then normally you will see one section where it says organic um or organic food or um organic vegetables okay so um we will look at a little bit about that even though technically the terms that they use in supermarket are wrong, but we, we don't want to discuss about that. Okay, and then on um, the following module, we learn about simple substances, air, water, ammonia. So these are some of the general things that we encountered almost every day. Okay, and then about smog, pollution, and acid rain, fuel, fat, soaps, and so on and so forth. So these are all the topics that uh, we, we will cover for the next um, 13 weeks or six weeks or so. Okay. All right, model one, introduction. So learning objective, uh, by the end of this lecture, I'm hoping that you'll be able to understand and differentiate what are atoms, elements, molecules, compounds, and mixtures, what are the differences between those um, terminologies, okay? Uh, you will understand the and, and differentiate the differences between covalent bond, therefore dipole bond, special bond, hydrogen bonds, okay? So these are all um, the general bonds that you might have learned um, during your high school, or um, if you take, what is it, um, life science um, during your matriculation or from six, then um, you should be able to, um, you know, refresh your mind a little bit about this, okay? And then finally, we look at a very tiny bit, just two lectures about organic and inorganic, okay? All right, so atoms and elements. So, um, in our daily life, um, especially if you are from a different faculty, you might, I'm, I'm not going to generalize this, hopefully I, I got it right, okay? So you, you, well definitely you will not encounter the words about atoms and elements and mixtures and so on, okay? But uh, just for your information, everything is made up of a tiny particles called atoms, okay? Even though nowadays atoms are not the smallest one, we do have quartz, um, we, we have electrons, which is even smaller or, or part of an atom, okay? Um, but there are smaller and smaller um, materials or materials, okay, that, that scientists or, or physicists found um, in, in our, you know, as, as we progress in our technology, okay? For example, if you have a coffee here, okay, coffee is made up of uh, coffee beans, and then from the coffee beans, you have this caffeine. So this is caffeine. It's a molecule, a molecule that contains in a coffee bean. A molecule that you drink, if you're a coffee drinker, of course, if you're a tea drinker, um, the molecule is slightly changed, but more or less it's the same, okay? Um, so this is the molecule that makes you awake. If you drink coffee, if you cannot sleep, it makes you kind of like a bit more energetic. So these are the molecule, or this is the molecule that is responsible, okay? So um, this is the chemical structure of a caffeine, and this is what we call as a ball and stick representation. Okay, so why do we call it as ball and stick? Because you can see it's kind of like a spherical bond, okay? Over here, you'll see like everything is just a single line. So I'm hoping that, um, 
because I do not know your background per se, whether you have done chemistry previously or not. So I'll just do, I will just cover like very, very basic chemistry. Okay. So each bond over here at the very end, you have one carbon. Okay. So normally you have carbon, but in um, uh, this chemical representation, normally as a chemist, we do not use, uh, we do not draw um, the, the C that, um, uh, do, donates, uh, dictates um, carbons. Okay, so normally carbons will just be left out because as a chemist, we normally just understand a single line, even if it's, oops, even if it's like this, then you know that at the very end you have carbons and then uh, based on the theory, each carbon needs to fulfill four different bonds. So you have one bond over there. So you need to have another bond over there, over there and over there. Okay, so these are all what chemistry is. And therefore, um, for example, if you look at that one, that position over there, okay, which is similar to this position over here, okay, there's nothing protruding out from that uh, particular scenario. Uh, but because this one is carbon and carbon needs to fulfill four bonds, then you can see there's one bond over here, one bond over there, one bond over here. So that a total of three. Therefore, the fourth one is with hydrogen which is normally missing in this representation, okay? However, if you go into ball and stick representation, you will need to draw your hydrogen. So this is the hydrogen, okay? So these are some of the um, different representation of uh, chemistry. Um, why do I want to put this one in? Because um, I'm not sure about Malaysian. Malaysian probably don't really like to do tattoo, but um, overseas uh, where I used to study in Australia, so everyone likes to do, you know, tattoo a little bit, even though I don't have one, of course. Um, but, um, you know, all the orang or, or the um, uh, Caucasians, they like to have tattoos. Some of them actually tattoo a picture of a caffeine. And then uh, you can actually Google this and you definitely find it. Okay. And what makes it worse is that the structure of caffeine is wrong. So, um, you know, knowing chemistry sometimes can be fun especially because uh, if someone wants to kind of like, you know, um, like be a la a la like a chemistry uh, personnel and then draw something wrong. So um, as chemists, sometimes it's kind of like what makes life fun. Okay. And then um, from these atoms that form a caffeine molecule, you have this. So this is a structure of an atom. Okay. When we draw atom, a spherical atom or, or a ball shaped atom like this, it is actually not like that. It's actually like this. We have um, a nucleus that consists of a proton and a neutron. Okay. Surrounding protons and neutrons, we have these electrons. Okay. While proton and neutrons tend to kind of like aggregate and, and stay kind of like contact 100% um, or 99% of the time, electron moves around. Okay, so um, that's why when you see a ring like this, if you have seen something like this previously, either from a radioactive logo or, you know, from just um, Googling Chernobyl um, nuclear fusion or Fukushima nuclear fusion or a uh, nuclear reactor explosion, sometimes you will see this symbol. Okay, this is round symbol. What it means is that this electron actually does not stay, uh, stay still. It keeps on moving and it moves very, very quick. Okay. So it moves around and this one moves around and this one moves around. But again, the movement are not in the ring shape. Okay. So uh, basically in chemistry, we do not know the position of an electron. Therefore, that's why, you know, when you have, when you have an, something that keeps on moving everywhere. Okay. But it will center on the nucleus of the particular atom. So it moves everywhere. So that's why it kind of like forming a circular. So statistically, if you have something moving, so this one is the nucleus, for example. Okay. And of course, nucleus, if you look at this structure on the right hand side, it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's not spherical, of course. Okay. So I'm just drawing it like a spherical, just for simplicity. But when you have an electron here moving everywhere, probability of it forming a circle like that is very high. So that's why in chemistry, we normally draw atoms as a circle. It doesn't mean that it's actually a circle always, but um, the movement of this electron, or we call it as electron cloud, 
forms kind of like a secular um, structure in a single atom, okay? Where you will see um, in the next few slides, as you jump from atoms to molecules, to elements, to mixtures, and so on and so forth, um, you will see that this electron cloud shifts, it moves. So it doesn't stay still um, because again, electron clouds based on probability, uh, of course, we're not gonna go into this very detail about probability of electron movement, but um, that's the basic idea. So a probability of the electron to move in um, a secular fashion, it's kind of like how our Earth moves around the sun, but we have our own orbit, okay? Um, the orbit doesn't really change much. Um, we are not sure whether it doesn't change much at all, or it actually does change, but it changes very, very slow. But in comparison, electrons move very, very quick. Therefore, it forms kind of like a secular ball. Okay, so let's go into the chemistry daily life thingy. So the first item that we're going to look at is water. What is water made out of? So every, everyone drinks water. Probably you have water bottle like this. Um, if you're thirsty, you just go and drink it. Sorry, I'm going to drink. I'm too thirsty. Okay, so what is actually that moving thing? Okay, um, I'm not sure whether you guys can see me or not, um, but because I'm presenting something. If you're using mobile, then probably you can't see me. But for those who are actually using a laptop, then you can see me waving my bot water bottle. Okay, so this is water. Everybody drinks water, and water is made up of, oh, of course, what dictates here is a pure water. So is this water pure? Um, hmm, I probably should have put a poll F now. Is this water pure? The answer is no, because we cannot drink pure water. So as a human, we don't drink pure water. Um, yes, you might say, oh, I filter the water. I'm using, upper, what was it? Uh, uh, cocoa or whatever it is, whatever filter that you're using. You might say, oh, but doctor, I filtered my water. And so it becomes pure. Uh, but it's actually not pure, okay? Even if you filter it, you still have a lot of ions in here. You have... Um, um, a lot of ions, pretty much metals, a little bit of metals, um, ions. You have sodiums, you have um, chloride, you have some other stuff, alum, probably. Okay, so a pure water in chemistry, when we say it's pure, it means that it's a hundred percent purity, or at least 99.99% purity. Okay, so a pure water is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atoms. So, how does it look like? It looks like this, oh God, I can change my slide. Sorry, I need to pause for a while. Um, keep, oh, it looks like that, okay? So this is what a pure water looks like. You have one oxygen atom in the middle, okay? And surrounded by, or, or not surrounded, uh, more on uh, bonded by two, hydrogen atoms, okay? Therefore, we write it in a chemistry manner as H2O, okay? H2O, All right? So these bonds, I mean of, um, well, it, it doesn't really form a bond, so to say. Um, this is just a representation, okay? Um, I'm not going to go in very detail on why it's a bond and so on. Um, if you're interested, then you can talk about it. But otherwise, we'll just go in very you know, surface. Okay? And of course, this one is not pure water because we cannot drink 100% pure water. If you do drink pure water, what will happen is that our body will, um, the minerals from our body will leach out um, from our body into our urine and therefore you will be, uh, your body will, will have lack of nutrition, um, sodium, salts, and so on, and pretty much you can die, okay? So even though you drink a lot of pure, you drink a lot of water, pure water, you can still die, okay? So um, the water that we have, what the water that we drink are not pure. That's why um, sometimes when you buy um, a water bottle, like this, for example, see, I have a lot of water in my case, okay? You can, if you go and look at the labels, there's actually a lot of minerals, 
Okay. Uh, for example, this one contains potassium, it has um, calcium, sodium, magnesium, bicarbonate, sulfate, chloride, and some other stuff. Okay. So the water that we drink are never pure. All right. So um, for, for the next example, the food that um, I assume everybody loves might contain something like this. Okay. It has sucrose or uh, in a different name, it's a simple sugar, the simplest form of sugar that give you the um, sweet taste. Okay. It contains a little bit of acetic acid. It contains a little bit of plutonic acid. It contains a, a lot of theobromine. Okay. So these are all chemicals. So when people say, um, you know, some, some people in, in our um, life, either your cousins or your families or anyone from, that you know from your Facebook might say, you know, they want to avoid um, using chemicals, having a chemicals uh, in, in either their food or um, more recently in their vaccines. Vaccines contain a lot of chemicals that are harmful to you, for example. Okay, so this is one good example. A food that everybody loves. I'm sure everybody at least ate it once in their lifetime. At least when you're a kid, you definitely have, have tasted this. Okay. It contains a lot of chemicals. It contains sucrose. It contains acetic acid. So the name itself is an acid. Sounds, you know, very dangerous. But uh, in reality, a little bit of these chemicals are still fine to your body. Okay. Even your body produces some of this inside your body. Okay, so for you to say that, you know, you want to avoid all chemicals or all rated food additives and so on and so forth, uh, pretty much um, as, as a chemist, we, we will say that you don't know what you're um, saying. Okay, now, uh, what is this food? It's chocolate mousse. Oh, the picture is not there. Okay, it's chocolate mousse. If you have tasted chocolate, cho if you have not tasted chocolate mousse, then at least you have... Um, eat some chocolate, okay? So chocolate contains all of these ingredients, okay? As humans, what are we made up of? Um, we have about 62% of water, 16% of proteins. So proteins contains a lot of other atoms, carbons, uh, nitrogens, um, uh, hydrogens, okay? And pretty much these are what we are made of. So most of us are made up of oxygen, the things that we breathe in every single day, okay? Um, so can you breathe yourself? Uh, probably not because the oxygen inside your body is in a different form. It's not uh, an oxygen um, molecule. It's rather a mixture or a compound that we will see later, okay? So we have 1% of carbohydrates, 6% of minerals, 16% of fats, and so on. So um, if you go from the smallest to the largest, First one, we have particle or matters. So this one is a subset of an atom. So previously I said atoms is one of the smallest. Yes, but uh, scientists have discovered uh, more smaller materials uh, like what I mentioned just now in the nucleus of the atoms. So atoms is like that. At the center of the atoms, what we call it as nucleus, we have a, a neutron, okay? And we have a proton, okay? So that's particle of matter. And then from there, it makes up and builds up an atom. Atoms connecting or bonding to one another, forming molecules. Molecules makes the bigger molecules that we call as macromolecules. So the picture over there is our DNA. Okay, everybody has this. And then DNA forms cells. And cells forms us as a living human being or organism. So it can either be humans or uh, bacteria, viruses, COVID-19, for example, okay? And then, uh, it doesn't mean that organism forms population, but uh, a group of, of organism forms a population, and then we live on Earth, and then Earth is, contains a lot of um, other materials, okay? Then from Earth forms a planet, planet forms the solar system, or, or different other uh, planetary system with stars, and then from there, you form galaxies and so on, okay? So all of these are possible because of the existence of atoms, okay? So if, we, if it's just matter, if it's just this one, particles of matter, it will still not exist, 
Okay, so atoms are the the basic kind of like um, the optimum structure that interacts between particles of matter, and then from there it forms molecule and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, learning chemistry, so everything, every single thing in the world involves chemistry at some point. Okay, so atoms are the tiniest stable building block of all matter in the universe. As I mentioned, why, um, why do I put that stable? Because we do have particles of matter which are rather unstable on its own, but stable, stable enough when it forms atoms. And elements are the alphabets in the language of molecules. So, um, for example, in our English language, or, or um, of course, English language is the easiest, we have our alphabets. Um, A until Z, there are 26 letters that can make up thousands or millions of words. On the other hand, for chemistry, we have more than 120 elements and more elements are being discovered. And these elements made up of, uh, made up everything, okay? So it makes every single thing in um, our world, okay? So um, I'm sure if you have done chemistry in your high school, we normally learned um, until about the first 20 elements. Okay, that one over there. During high school, at least high school in Malaysia, um, during my time, it was a long way back. Okay, um, But uh, now we have more elements are being discovered. Um, most of them are inside here. And you can see um, each individual elements represent something. Okay, for example, um, we have over there zinc. Okay, I'm sure everybody knows zinc. Or um, we have hydrogen that I've shown you just now. We have carbon. So these are all the basic um, human being. So we are made out of a lot of um, uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. Of course, we do have a lot of metals. We have zinc in, in our body. We have um, iron. We have iron. Okay, iron is in our blood. So um, I'm not sure whether we have every single thing, but uh, we do have a lot of um, chemistry in our own body, okay? So atoms, again, the smallest particle of element that exists in, uh, in an atom from the Greek word atomus or uncatable. So when atom was first discovered, um, they call it atomus uh, because you, at that time, they were not able to, um, uh, kind of like slice it in a, in a small manner, chemistry-wise. So when when people discover, um, say, for example, water molecules, okay, so people know, people call it water. But what makes water water is because of the um, H2O, okay? So you have H2 hydrogen and one oxygen, and you have multiplets of that, or infinity, okay? And then the, the connectivity between the water molecules form water like this, okay? Um, so way back, people were able to cut the water molecule. So from this water into a single water, okay? They were able to identify a single water molecule. And then from the single water molecule, they were able to um, identify the water molecule are made up of um, hydrogen and oxygen, okay? And then they were not able to cut um, the hydrogen and oxygen to a smaller level. So that's why they call it atomus. Okay, probably um, if the first person who managed to discover um, neutrons or protons, then probably we call it protons instead of atoms. Okay, so these are just a little bit of history. So a structure of atoms look like that. So we have um, a, a spherical shape atoms from the electron cloud. Okay, from there, you have the nucleus in the middle, a center of the atom. And then from there, from the nucleus, it contains protons uh, and neutrons. And then from the protons and neutrons, can go and identify, uh, scientists were able to identify a little bit uh, further, forms quark or, or quartz. And then, of course, electrons over there, which has roughly the similar size. Okay, so 10 to the power of minus 16, um, centimeters, so you know, very very small. Okay, so every atom um, in an element has equal number of protons, 
Okay, so this is another definition. An element have the same atoms and each atom has an equal number of protons and electrons and it's electronically balanced or neutral. So meaning that it doesn't have any charge. Um, how can I see? It doesn't have any, yeah, you know, it doesn't have any charge. Okay, so um, again, just a refresher. So this is what you see in the periodic table, the ones, the table of elements that I've showed you in the previous slide. Okay, so basically when you look at periodic table, you can see this, the um, elemental symbol, okay? He is just for uh, is the symbol for helium. Helium has two uh, proton number. Okay. However, the mass is four. So two protons, meaning it has two proton and two neutrons. So this masses mix up four. So that, therefore, the mass is four. So why is it four point zero zero three? Because of course, uh, when we um, Calculate the the oh, again this mass is not the same mass as your weight so your body weight is weight it's not mass mass is something else weight is something else in chemistry those two are totally different definition okay so mass is um the number relative to what was it carbon okay so uh we don't know the mass we don't know the weight of a carbon but uh, we do know that carbon contains 12 um, protons. Okay, so what scientists did was that they use carbon as kind of like the um, benchmark. So they consider carbon um, weight or mass, the mass of a carbon to be 12.000. Therefore, any elements that has, um, and then they will do a ratio between these elements and carbon, that elements and carbon, Therefore, you get helium, um, the mass of helium in comparison to a carbon. So carbon is 12.000. If you uh, consider the, the content of um, helium, including all the electrons and so on, helium is about 4.003 relative to carbon. Okay, So this is what atomic mass of uh, chemistry is all about. It's not about weight at all. Uh, it doesn't mean that you, know, you can take one carbon and then you put it in a balance and then you will get 12.000. No, it doesn't work that way. 12.000 is a relative number. It's not an absolute number. Okay, and elements on the other hand are substance that consists of only one type of atom. Um, as I mentioned in the previous slide. So for example, oxygen, the air that we breathe. So oxygen, the atom number or the atom alphabet is just O, but the oxygen that we breathe are O2. Okay, so oxygen doesn't, um, the oxygen atom doesn't stay as an oxygen atom. It's not stable enough as an oxygen atom. Um, there's a lot of reason behind it. Uh, we're not going to touch. This one is more on basic chemistry, but more focusing on chemistry. But this course over here is more on how chemistry is related to our daily life. Hydrogen, similarly um, to oxygen, it has H2. However, carbon can stay as C, even though most likely it won't, it won't just stay as C. It will form something else, either CO, which is carbon, C triple bond O, which is carbon monoxide, or some other stuff. Okay. So substance that cannot be break down into um, simpler substances. So oxygen O2, for example, is an element. Um, in real, so element is more of um, something that you can find in our daily life so uh, if you go and chanko chanko sana dig here and there you can find it so this is the element so oxygen in our in our atmosphere um, stays as an you know, o2 instead of just o nitrogens similarly it will stay as n2 instead of just n okay so these are all elements okay so uh, each element has its sets of properties that distinguish it from the other elements for example, copper, okay, Cu, um, the, the um, code for copper, a uh, bronze colored solid that conducts uh, heat. So it has its own properties. Oxygen, on the other hand, is odorless, it's colorless. We cannot see it in our atmosphere. You cannot see my oxygen over here, even though I'm breathing it. Okay. Um, and it's colorless and odorless at room temperature. 
and of course um, oxygen itself is not enough to conduct electricity okay um, if you condense the oxygen then you might be able to do it but just an oxygen floating around in our air at about 20 to 21 percent it's not enough to conduct electricity okay so molecules uh, is formed when two or more atoms of an element chemically join together molecules such as hydrogen gas or ozone ozone is o3 oxygen gas is o2 consists only of one element or type of atoms so this is an example of hydrogen gas and instead of having two spherical like that so when it conjoins because there there should be um, uh, an attractive force between those two um, atoms it forms like that Okay. What well, what is compounds? So compounds, on the other hand, is a molecule that made up of atom from different elements. So it's a mix. It's a mixture of something. All compounds are molecules, again, okay, but not molecules are compounds. So what do I mean by that? We will see. Okay. Compounds contain more than one type of atoms. That is um, the critical definition of a compound. So therefore. Um, all compounds are molecules, but not all molecules are. Wait, why? What happened? But not all molecules are compound. Okay, as you can see previously, molecules an example of molecule are, for example, H two, uh, O two or H two or N two, and so on and so forth. Compounds. We have an example here. Okay, so compounds on the other hand are something like water. We have touched water in our first. Uh, first slide of this lecture, you have uh, a mix of an oxygen and hydrogen. You have nitrogen oxide is a byproduct, one of the byproducts of um, combustion engine. You have nitrogen dioxide, again, uh, a byproduct of a combustion engine. And you have carbon dioxide, again, a byproduct of combustion engine. So there's a lot of engineering in here. Okay. However, for a molecule, are the ones that are pure. So only contains one type of atom. So this one are all molecule. And these are all compounds. Okay. Um, so a composition of a molecule is uh, donated by listing the chemical symbols of an animal it contains and denoting the number of atoms for each element by a um, subscript. So, um, for example, um, say, so this one is basically like how I've been written, uh, I've been writing, okay, oxygen, for example, you put it a subscript of two instead of O2 or superscript O2, okay, in chemistry, when you write something, you use a superscript, so this one is right, those two are wrong. Oh, again. My iPad is causing me problems. Okay. okay. So thus H2O tells us that the molecule of water consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Okay, by just looking at that. So this is um, I'm not sure for me it's, this is very basic. Um, I'm sure for those who actually took chemistry, it will be very basic as well. So I'm just hoping that you guys can bear with me. So a methane, for example, that contains one carbon and four hydrogen. It's written as CH4 with a subscript of 4. Methanol is written as that or that. So there's two ways of writing it. Either you put the functional group, which is hydroxyl. So you can see that one over there. Hydroxyl as OH, so CH3OH. Or you can just combine it, CH4O. Okay. However, this one can also represent a different molecule, okay, depending on... Um, the nature. Of course, for methanol, it's not, but for ethanol, for example, or, or uh, butanol, which can, which also have uh, hydrogen, uh, hydroxyl functional groups. Okay, so it can donate something else. So most of the time, we will use that one to just show that the molecule contains a functional group called hydroxyl. H Y D R O X Y L. Okay, hydroxyl functional group. Formaldehyde, on the other hand, has a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Um, so we write it as CH2O, okay? Um, and then, and so on and so forth. So forming acid, again, you put it C, uh, OH over there, 
just to show that um it's very simple what if you have a longer asset okay for example like that so normally when you write it down you go and do ch um, 3 and then open bracket ch2 of whatever multiple copies and then cooh normally that's how you write it okay um i'm not sure whether this is beneficial for you guys um but this is just an example and therefore carbon dioxide is written as co2 okay for illustration of the compound, the elements can be distinguished based on the color. For example, hydrogen is shown as white, carbon is black, oxygen is red, nitrogen is normally blue. Okay, but again, this color is just uh, a representation. It doesn't mean that hydrogen is always white, even though it's always white. Um, doesn't mean that carbon is always black. Sometimes uh, carbon is being colored or dictates as green, um, but oxygen normally most of the time is red and then nitrogen um, is normally blue blue okay so this is just one example um, again this is kind of like a figure of the caffeine that uh, caffeine that i've shown um, in the beginning so over there because it's um, this one because it's red so that one is oxygen okay and then that one black, so black means it's carbon. Of course, this one is not equal to that. <laughs> um, it's two different things. Okay, and white is the hydrogen. Okay, this is just a representation. Um, again, I might ask you, I give you a figure, and then identify which one is oxygen, which one is green. So you should expect something like that, um, because this course is um, like a basic chemistry, so you should be able to expect some questions are very very basic very very easy um, and therefore this might be asked in the future okay so now we move on to the next category which is mixtures mixtures consist of substances such as molecular compound simply mingling together okay a good example of a mixture um, before i go to the next point a good example of a mixture is here over here can you see my my air consisting of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and so on and so forth, right? So if you actually zoom in, you can actually see. So our air is a mixture of a lot of other things, okay? So for example, you have nitrogen, which is roughly, if I'm not mistaken, about 78%. Then we have our oxygen, um, which is O2, about 21%. And then um, a mixture of other gases that consists of about the 1%. Yeah, got it right. Probably slightly wrong. I'm very confident about oxygen. I can't even remember about nitrogen. I, I remember it's about 70 ish. Um, but if you consider that carbon dioxide, if I'm not mistaken, is roughly about 5 to 6%. So probably that one is around 70 to 72 cent. Okay? All right. Food and living things are things that use landscape as a stage uh, and which are often uh, this destined to become food themselves are extremely complex mixtures of organic compounds for they consist of a variety of biological cells with all the stuff of life back inside. So this is just one example of what mixture is. Another example is our cells. So our body is a mixture of a lot of things. The flavor of an orange, for example, is also a mixture, um, unconscious conspiracy of hundreds of different compounds. So an orange is not just an orange. It doesn't, it tastes like an orange because there's a mix of something. So that's why an orange that you buy today might taste slightly different compared to the orange that you buy next week. Okay, yeah, it, I, I wouldn't say tomorrow because it might be the same brand, so the taste is different, but uh, similar, but if you buy an orange like months apart, then definitely the tastes are different. Uh, even the oranges from different countries taste differently because it contains different, uh, in the soil itself, it contains different um, elements, it contains different uh, mixtures. Therefore, when the plants absorb the, all the nutrients, the fruits of the oranges contains different mixtures, thus the tastes are different. 
Okay. In Malaysia, for example, um, if you talk about um, uh, what's the mango that comes from Perlis, uh, what do you call it? I can't remember the name. Um, but yeah, there's a species of mango that only only grows on Perlis. Um, it's very, tastes very nice. I, I really love it. Um, but um, if you try and grow the same plant, Haromanis, yes, thank you. Okay, so Haromanis is a type of mango that grows, um, it started off growing in, in Perlis, it tastes very, very nice. But if you take the same plant and then say, for example, you grow it in Johor or in Selangor, the taste will be totally different. Okay, um, it might still be tasty, but not as tasty as if it's grown in Perlis. Okay, so... Um, can you name me? So we've touched about all the categories. Um, it's kind of like the, oh, we, we are actually ending um, just one hour. So we'll finish our lecture early today. Okay. So can you identify me? What is the first one? Anyone wants to unmute and um, share? Or you can just type it in the chat. It's fine. I can just read it. So that one is Atom. Oh. Atom. So one is Atom. How about this one? Molecule. 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 Are you sure it's a molecule? Yes. Molecule. How about that one? Compound. Compound. That one? It's a molecule. Yep. Molecule. Molecule. How about this? And that. We have two. Um, mixture. So this one is mixture. And that one is compound. The same type. So it's compound. So this one has two definition. It can be a molecule. It can be a compound. Um, of course, water, we normally say water molecule. Um, the definition varies a little bit uh, depending on the textbook that you use. But generally, when you say um, it's a molecule, molecule normally is like that. So it only contains a single uh, type of atom. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Oh, uh, there are a few more slides. So what is the difference between atoms and elements, a compound and a molecule? Um, what makes it different? It's Bond. Okay. Um, this one is supposedly, um, but not James Bond. It's molecular bond, okay? So um, bonds between atoms made up of all different things. The links between atoms that hold them in specific geometrical arrangement are called bonds. Of course, um, for those who know chemistry, there are a lot more types of bonds. Um, either if you just write down, say for example, um, O2, which means that it has that kind of bond. So that one, as we call it as a covalent bond. Okay. But um, say, for example, water molecule that makes water water. Okay. That makes water becomes like this and not floating on the air like um, an oxygen is because of a hydrogen bond. So we'll look at these types of bonds in a little bit more detail. Okay. Number of bonds that is given uh, that a given atom can form is reflected on the number of electrons it can share with its neighbor. So this is kind of like the reason behind why oxygen is a double bond, while carbon um, can be something like that, or it can be something like that, okay? So, but if you see um, how I draw it, even though this molecule and that molecule are different, but carbon always have four bonds okay oxygen all, always have two bonds hydrogen always have one bond okay so um the the determination is based on the number of electrons or to be more specific the electron valence so the outside ring of an electron um i don't think i'm going to go in very detail on that just simply say number of uh, electron valence um, that dictates the number of bonds. So if you have one atoms, for example, if you're looking at hydrogen over here, okay, hydrogen only have one um, electrons, so it can only form one bond. Okay, for 
um, bromine, fluorine, um, calcium, sorry, not calcium, chloride, and iodide. It has seven um, number of electrons, but if you consider um, the, um, I know we, we consider it lone pair, but I'm trying to figure out what would be the nicest thing to say. Okay, so electrons uh, or, or atoms, electrons likes to stay, uh, to stay in pairs. Okay, so um, electrons, they don't like to just floating around uh, in a single, single, okay? It always comes in pairs. It likes to be in pairs. So if you look at this um, group over here, okay, it has seven electron valence. So seven. So if you consider each um, electron likes to be in pairs, then you get three pairs of electrons and then one single pair of electron. But because this one likes to bond with, uh, likes to be in pairs, so this one can form a bond with something else. Okay, so that's why even though hydrogen only have one electron, it forms one bond, but um, all these um, atoms, it, it has seven valences, electron valence, but only one single atoms, therefore it still form one bond, okay? Oxygen, on the other hand, um, you might say, but doctor, if you um, say there's six electron valence, then can't they just form six? Um, but um, another kind of like, uh, um, not the theory, um, another rule of an atom is that it likes to have a number of E. So these are all not just a made up numbers. Um, these are all based on history. So um, yeah, it likes to have an E. So a total of E, um, except for hydrogen. So hydrogen, it has one. Um, but when you have another hydrogen over there, which also has one, then when they share their electrons, each of them has a pair. So it doesn't have to have an eight for hydrogen, but for everything else, normally they like to have an eight number of electrons. Okay. Um, so oxygen, because it has six, therefore it needs to have another two partners. So say for example, hydrogen. So if you're talking about water molecules, H2O, Okay. So this H will share with that oh, uh, that electron and that H will share with the other um, hydrogen. So therefore, for, for this one, you'll get H2O, which now everybody satisfied the requirement. Oxygen likes to have eight electrons and each electron has a pair. Um, hydrogen, on the other hand, uh, likes to only have one electron and it wants to have a pair. Therefore, it shares one electron from the oxygen and one from it, um, the ones that it has, then it has now two electrons. Oxygen now has eight electrons, and therefore, um, if you're talking about oxygen itself, it likes to have, it, normally it will satisfy to have two bonds, okay? Nitrogen, similarly, um, because you need to get the, the number eight, so, and nitrogen only have five electrons, so it forms three bonds. Carbon, it has four, again, the number eight, eight minus four becomes four. So this is how you can kind of like determine the number of bonds very, very quickly by knowing the number of electrons. Okay. Of course, there's, there's more uh, detail on that, but this is just a, a basic ones. So in writing the structure formula of a molecule, uh, uh, depiction of the bonding pattern in a molecule, a bond is represented by a short single line like that between the chemical symbols and the atoms it joins. So oxygen, on the other hand, you have two bonds because it has two bonds, okay? Um, it, it likes to have two bonds, or if you want to draw water molecule, it'll be like that, okay? If you draw it like that, then it's wrong, okay? Because now um, oxygen needs to have two bonds. But over here, it only have one bond. While hydrogen normally will just have one bond, but the hydrogen in the middle here now has two bonds. So even though if you consider the atoms um, that you are writing is the same, but the arrangement also takes a, a role in how you actually write the chemical structure or the chemical formula. 
Okay. For example, the bond between hydrogen atoms and the chlorine uh, in hydrogen chloride is HCl. So this is, if you just write it, it's HCl, but it can be represented as H-Cl. Some atoms can form more than one bond together with another atom. So a good example is carbon, as we have uh, shown you in the previous slide. When a carbon atom shares two pairs of electrons with the neighboring oxygen atoms, um, there is a double bond between them, and this double bond is donated or, or illustrated as C double bond O. Okay. Similarly, two atoms can share three lone uh, pairs of electrons, in which case the atom are joined by a triple bond, as in the hydrogen cyanide molecule, which can be shown as like this. Okay, H dash C triple triple lines, and then N. So how does these um, atoms share their electrons? It's like this. If you consider nitrogen, which from the previous slide has five electrons, so you can count one, two, three, four, and five. Carbon has four, one, two, three, four. Hydrogen has one. So how do they share so that their electrons um, are in pairs? That's one rule. And then second one, so that the total number of electrons that each atom has is eight. Okay? Or except for hydrogen, of course. Hydrogen only has two. So if you count that, hydrogen, it satisfies the requirements that I mentioned. So number one, uh, electrons in pairs. Okay. Um, probably just pair. Electrons in pair. So two electrons in one pair. And you can see that one are all written as in pairs. Okay. And number two, atoms uh, needs to have eight electrons. Except hydrogen. Okay. So if you count now number of electrons, because the ones that are being shared are considered um, available for both. So carbon, for example, so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now carbon has eight um, electrons in total. Nitrogen, on the other hand, similarly, you have six over there and then two uh, lone pairs over here. Then you'll get eight as well. Hydrogen, you have one. So if you count the number of molecules like this, okay, if you kind of like extract out the structure, then you have carbon over there. You have one, two, three, and four from carbon. And of course, because you have hydrogen and each hydrogen have one electrons, then you have one there from this hydrogen, one there from this hydrogen, another one from this hydrogen, and another one from this hydrogen. Now, in total, you will have, um, you will satisfy the two requirements that I mentioned, which um, electron will uh, love to have um, a pass or likes to be in pairs. And then second one, each atom uh, likes to have electron valence of eight. Okay. If you do for every single molecule like this, you will see that everything is still the same. Someone unmuted their mic. You want to ask something? Afik uh, or oh, Afiko? Right, never mind. I'll just mute him. Okay. So, um, you want to ask something, Afik? Ketak. Ready? All right. So, if you look at um this one, which is a bit unique. So to say, so you know you have carbon has four, hydrogen each one has one, and then oxygen has six. So how do you put it in pairs? Um, again, if you go back to the previous slide, you can see oxygen, for example, has six, right? So you have like that. Okay, so those two are in pairs, and that one, and those two are actually sharing with carbon. Okay, so um, I could probably put that one X from carbon and then dots from this oxygen. And then you have one dot and X from hydrogen and then dot and X from another hydrogen. So from here, you can see now you have two hydrogens, one carbon, and then one oxygen. So you fulfill the requirement CH2O. Okay, and then that's how you see it. Each um, lone pair. Uh, denotes as a single line 
Therefore, that one is single line, single line, and a double line over there. So you get a double line between carbon and oxygen and single line between carbon and hydrogen. Okay. Similarly, you can just uh, go and have a practice with these two. If you do need the answers, then be my guest. You can always ask me, then I'll provide it to you. Okay. So now we are looking at um, the forces that interact between molecules. So dipole-dipole forces can be a strong and have a long-range uh, interaction. So dipole-dipole force is one of the forces um, that exist in pretty much all molecules. Okay, It is uncharged, meaning that um, for something in acid, for example, it can have a charge. But for dipole, it doesn't need to have a charge. But it is a permanent polar. What do I mean by permanent polar is that you can see over here, um, remember when I say electron cloud is being represented as a spherical? And then for an atom, it's normally a spherical, but once it forms a molecule, the structure can change a little bit. So this is also changed. So you can see one atom over here has a larger electron cloud, while the other one has a smaller electron cloud. Okay, So this is because um, the number of protons at the nucleus of the atom itself is different. Okay, For example, um, what could this be? So if this one is a hydrogen chloride, okay, so you can hydrogen uh, nucleus number is smaller, bigger um, nucleus number. So this nucleus number has a lot of protons and protons attracts uh, white electrons um, kind of like repel. So protons is plus, electrons is uh, minus. So that's why um, they forms an electron cloud and that's why the electron doesn't go anywhere else because the nucleus, the nucleus that has a positive charge kind of like binds the electron that has a negative charge close to it so it doesn't move around. However, when but they can also share with another uh, atom. So in this case, hydrogen is sharing with chloride. But because chloride has, I um, can't remember the, the proton number, um, has a, a bigger number of protons. So if you consider the nucleus itself, hydrogen has one proton, but nucleus has a lot more protons. So this is kind of like if you want to imagine um, if you have uh, a magnet like this, okay, so the metallic looking magnet as compared to the black magnet okay, as compared to um, the very old magnet, I'm not sure whether you guys have played with this, but uh, um, like the black magnet from a fridge magnet. So normally you will see, oops, you, you will see these two types of magnets uh, floating around in the market. So one is a shiny type one, one is black one. Okay, so it's similarly this magnet, even though if you look at the size, this magnet is smaller, the one on the, the shiny ones compared to the black one, but the shiny ones has a stronger magnetic field compared to the black ones. Okay, so similarly what happened here, because hydrogen has a lower number of protons, so the attraction force uh, within the molecule itself from the hydrogen is smaller in comparison to uh, chlorine. Okay. Therefore, chlorine normally kind of like it takes out the electron cloud. The probability density, uh, the probability of an electron um, being in hydrogen is less than being in chloride. So the, this cloud is showing a probability. Okay. So because chlorine, chlorine is another thing is because it's bigger. So um, that's the reason why it's big. Uh, but uh, the probability probability density of the electron staying in chloride is bigger compared to uh, hydrogen. Therefore, oh, how does it create a polar, a dipole? So um, when I talk about polar here, polar means opposite charge. So you have plus and minus. In our Earth, you have uh, North Pole and South Pole. Okay. So if you consider just H and H, or probably Cl and Cl, okay, because the strength of these two molecules or these two atoms are equal, so there's no polar. So basically, if you were to draw an electron cloud, it will be, um, well, 
it, it should be kind of like a mirror image okay so almost identical similarly for that one so it will be almost identical but when you put in h and cl and cl will be bigger and h will be smaller okay so because the elect electrons are being pulled towards um, the more electronegative uh, chloride so if that's the case what will happen because now Originally, everything in, in an atom is, is neutral, right? So the electrons are moving nicely together and, and balancing out the proton attraction force. But now because you have a chlorine uh, on the other side that pulls the electron uh, closer to, to it. So now you will have a lack of electrons. So again, electron consists of a, a negative charge. Um, and therefore, you will have something like this. Okay, if you look at that, that structure over there, now you are creating a polar, you are creating a dipole. So, because originally uh, for that one, it equals, right? So, the electron cross is equal. So, it has an equal plus and minus. Similarly, for, oops, for a chlorine electron density, it has an equal plus and minus everywhere. But once you combine them together, these two atoms um, together forming a molecule, then... Uh, because the electron is moving towards that way. So from a neutral plus and minus, now it becomes more plus because a lot of the minus electron moving to the chloride. Okay, And therefore, because a lot of electrons, are, uh, there's a high tendency of the electron moving to the chloride atom, therefore you will get a, a delta negative or a slight negative charge on the chloride. Okay? So from here, because you have a net charge of movement or, or you have a polar, right? Uh, positive and negative, even though it's not a full charge negative. So that's why I say it's uncharged. It's just a polar. So it's a delta. So it's a temporary um, and it's not strong enough to make it into a charge. So it's an uncharged and it's a permanent polar. For example, this one. Okay. And then um, the charge that is being formed because of the polarity so you can say delta plus here, delta minus. So delta plus will be attracted to delta minus. Okay. So there will be a dipole forces between these two um, molecules. Excuse me, I need to. All right, sorry about that. Office call. Oops. Okay. All right, so what happened to my slide? Oh, here. Okay, so because of because of the delta charges, so you'll get an attraction force um, in blue. Of course, now it becomes red. <laughs> attraction force between the delta negative and delta plus. Um, and similarly, you get uh, a repulsion between delta negative and delta negative. It's similar to on how, um, you know, when you have a magnet, you see my magnet over here. I'm playing with magnets. Can you guys see this? Okay. When the charge is uh, opposite, it will just push one another. So repulsion. And when the charge is similar or delta um, is opposite, sorry. If the uh, partial charge is opposite, therefore it attracts. Okay. Similar to how a magnet works. All right. So um, the next force that we're going to look at is the dispersion force. It's also known as induced dipole or dispersion interaction under dispersion force. There's, there's multiple names and often found in hydrogen, in halogen, for example, C2, F2, I2, noble gas, and so on and so forth. So as I mentioned previously, that one is uh, nonpolar, uh, but you, what you can do is you can actually induce a polarity. Okay, 
So lemon spear falls um, often found. That's why it's often found in chlorine, fluorine, iodine, and so on and so forth. Okay, lemon dispersion force are part of Van der Waals forces, uh, and a weak intermolecular attraction. So again, it's uncharged and it's temporary. So in this case, for example, um, so say if originally they are all equal. Okay, so just for the sake of an argument, they are all equal. But what might happen is um, this chain of uh, molecule might encounter um, something. So say, for example, water molecule. Okay, And of course, water molecule, if you consider the polarity, then um, because oxygen is way bigger, so it likes to take electrons, especially if you compare to hydrogen, which is the smallest atom. So you'll get a delta negative on the oxygen. And therefore, you have delta plus on both hydrogen. Okay, And originally, chlorine that is um, equal, when it comes into contact, oops, when it comes into contact with a, a hydrogen, sorry, with the um, hydrogen that has a delta plus, so this might induce a dipole moment. Okay, it might induce so that, oops, delta minus, so that electron comes to that particular uh, chlorine even further. So this is what it means by the induced, yeah, induced dipole. Okay, induced meaning that something originally is not, but then something triggers it to become a dipole or a polar. So this is an example. Okay? So now a uh, water molecule which has a plus charge, uh, a delta plus, um, creates a delta negative on one side of the chlorine atom, a chlorine molecule, and therefore the other side becomes a delta plus. Okay. Because when, if you consider a dynamic of things when it moves, so this is what happened. It will kind of like be a chain reaction. So since this one now becomes delta plus, therefore that one becomes delta negative. And similarly, that one becomes delta plus, delta negative, delta plus, delta negative, delta plus. So it induces um, a temporary, um, temporary polarity for the supposedly neutral molecule. Okay, so this is what is called as um, dispersion force or induced dipole and so on. Okay, and uh, among all these bonds, one of the strongest is um, hydrogen bond. So it occurs in a polar molecule when hydrogen atom is bonded to a highly electronegative atom. So for example, NO and F. Um, and you can consider sulfur as well. Okay, so this interaction is donated by the dotted line A dot 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 B and sometimes with a delta sign um, delta. Okay, so um, again, this is not charged. A hydrogen bond is a polar. Um, it's kind of like a dipole. Um, it is still a dipole, but the bond is stronger. And it only forms between hydrogen connecting to uh, an OFS and vice versa. So you can see here, for example, um, this um, hydrogen connected to O. Uh, that one is a bad example. We start in the middle. Okay. So this hydrogen connected to this O, and this hydrogen connected to this O. So from here, as I'm, I showed previously, uh, it forms a, uh, it is a polar molecule. Okay. So it has a dipole. So now what happened is that this um, delta plus from the hydroxyl forms another bond with a, uh, another oxygen, okay? Um, or oxygen, or it can be nitrogen, sulfur, or phosphate, okay? So only of these four atoms can a hydrogen bond forms. Without these four, it will not form. So if, say, um, this molecule over here is actually just a carbon with hydrogen, okay? So between this hydrogen and that carbon, there will not be any hydrogen bond. Between this hydrogen and that uh, hydrogen, there will not. There will also be no hydrogen bonds. Okay. So hydrogen bond needs to be between the um, O N S F P with a hydrogen dot 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 with another O N S F. Okay, so this is where hydrogen 
I oops hydrogen bond. Okay, this is where the hydrogen bond forms. Okay, between this, so you need to have that connected to hydrogen, and then this hydrogen can form another um, hydrogen bonding with another set of the same atom. Okay, uh, I mean not not the same atom, but these five atoms. So if you have C with H, uh, with another C with O, for example, this one. It's not hydrogen bonding. Or if you have C and H with um, O and C, okay, this one is also not hydrogen bonding. Okay, hydrogen bonding must be O H dot 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 O C. This one is a yes because the hydrogen over here is surrounded by two of the electronegative ones, which is O and S F P. Okay. Right. So, an example on where hydrogen bond takes uh, a very, very important role in our daily life is in our body. So, in our body, we have a lot of hydrogen bonds, and part of it, what we you see here, if you know what these four things are, okay. So, these are the molecules that made up of uh, made up our genetic materials, our DNA, our mRNA. Is the vaccines that that if you take if you took um. Pfizer, then um, you have these um, molecules inside your body. Uh, of course, it's now being processed into something else. But this is just an example. So in our DNA, in our genetic materials, contains a lot of uh, these four molecules, of course, in a, a very long chain. And then these molecules, remember when, uh, probably I shouldn't say remember. So uh, in our DNA, um, deoxynucleic acid, it is a double helix strand, like that, okay. And these strands are connected to a hydrogen, uh, are connected to one another via hydrogen bond. Okay, so these are two different strands, much uh, like if, say, for example, let me do a lot of examples. Okay, so if imagine that this is two strands, they are not connected to one another. But uh, in, in our DNA, it's kind of like uh, forming a helix. So it's kind of like entangled to one another. And then between those two strands, there are a lot of hydrogen bonds. Okay, so these hydrogen bonds in the middle there, you can see donated, uh, depicted as a dot dot lines. Okay, and you also have over there. So thymine and adenine always form two hydrogen bonding, while guanine and cytosine always form three hydrogen bonds. Okay, so that's why you can see here. Um, sorry, yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, I need to see the tape. You guys tak bagi tahu saya kan? Tak bagi tahu. Maksudnya kena bagi tahu tau. You need to remind the company. You need to tell me. Because you need to get a permission letter to enter you guys. But for the time, our will not release money to you. Oh, ah, okay. So, uh, but for today, I can accept, but um, I will email you guys and make sure we get it documented. Yeah, so this one is just because of MCO. So, without MCO, then it's, it's okay. Um, sorry, guys, I'll just do this very quickly. Uh, we have yeah, okay. Now to, uh, yeah it's, it's just because of MCO. Right? That's just fine. I'll just email you guys and uh, sort this out later. Okay, sorry. I have a lecture, so. <laughs> I see. Oh. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Oops. All right. So let's carry on. There's a lot of advertisement. Okay, so this is our DNA. Uh, as I mentioned, guanine and cytosine are always connected with three hydrogen bonds, while uh, thymine and adenine always connected uh, via two hydrogen bonds. Okay. All right. So um, this is our last two slides. So usually compounds um so this last two slides just talk a little bit about organic and inorganic molecule or inorganic compounds so organic compounds are compounds containing carbon and usually hydrogen okay so 
um, this is what defines an organic. Okay? In, in chemistry, this defines organic. So um, even if you go to the supermarket, sometimes you'll see organic food or organic uh, fertilizers. So the definition for that organic is slightly different than the chemistry ones, even though they are kind of like related a little bit. So the idea is to have um, an organic as in not using any chemicals. Uh, but as a chemist, it sounded a bit funny because, you know, everything has chemicals in there. Regardless of what you are talking about, you're just talking about water. Water contains chemical. It contains a lot of hydrogen bonds. So um, to say that this food is organic and the other one is not organic is technically incorrect. Okay. Um, however, it's, it's not chemistry. It's It's marketing pretty much so that's why uh, marketing they like to use all these fancy words even though um, technically it's it's not okay so organic compounds are compounds containing carbon and hydrogen compounds that are not organic or inorganic so inorganic means that it's not organic um oh so inorganic are just a terminology so the compounds that are not uh, organic is called as inorganic some very simple car uh, carbon compounds, particularly those not containing hydrogen, uh, for example, carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is still considered as an organic molecule, even though it doesn't have any uh, hydrogen. Um, chalk. Chalk is uh, purely uh, calcium carbonate. So again, it doesn't have any, any um, it has carbons in there, uh, but it's not a pure carbon. Okay. Um, and other carbonates, uh, for other carbonates, for example, I can't remember what are the examples. But anyhow, I was just going to finish because after this, we have pull everywhere. Okay, so honorary organic, uh, inorganic compounds are, uh, for example, in our gas, so chlorine gas, okay, bromine gas. So these are all honorary uh, inorganic compounds. Um, it's just a terminology, nothing, nothing big, okay. An example of organic compound that can be found in uh, our everyday life is such as a cholesterol. So cholesterol contains um, a lot in food that you cook okay, um, in, in your body. It doesn't mean that it's always bad. So when you hear about cholesterol, normally what you will hear is that, oh, cholesterol is bad for your health and so on. But there are two types of cholesterol. There are good cholesterol and there are bad cholesterol. Of course, uh, in moderation, Everything can be okay, but uh, in excessive, even the good ones can be bad. Okay, for example, water. You do need to drink a lot of water, but if you drink too much of water, then you, you will also die. Okay, uh, if you don't believe me, then you can Google it. You you can actually find the information. Okay, so take everything in moderation, then you should be okay. So um, moving back to the lecture, um, cholesterol has a good side of a cholesterol and a bad cholesterol okay so um previously in the previous semester we normally ask the students to try and find out what is good cholesterol or what is bad cholesterol uh, sometimes you will hear ldl or hdl okay high density lipoprotein or low density lipoprotein so kind of like related to how cholesterol levels are okay but um for today i'm just gonna skip it and we'll just play around with pull everywhere Okay, so these are some other examples of um, organic compounds that can be found in also our daily life. Okay, we have over the first one is acetaminophen, or the chemistry name is N acetyl P or para um, aminophenol. So this is when you have a headache, you normally eat it. So this is in the official name is panadol. Okay. So this is what you've been eating um, if you have a fever or if you have a headache. Okay, so this is the, the chemical structure. Um, additionally, you have dextrose in the middle over there or the chemistry name is penta, which means five. Hydroxy, hydro means this one over here, OH. Hexanol is the hexa um, shapes of the molecule itself. So pentahydrohexanol um, is what we call as sugar. 
Okay, so this is one type of sugar. So of course, there are multiple types of sugar. So this is one example of uh, sugar. And also, um, oleic acid, that's the structure over here. Um, the chemistry name is octadec 9 nine enoic acid so acid refers to this functional groups over at the end coh this is an acidic functional group um nine the number nine over here because if you oops if you count the number of carbon that one is one two three four five six seven eight nine so at the nine position there is an in and in means it's a double bond okay so double bonds, again, if you go back to our previous lecture, it means that that carbon and carbon number nine shares two electrons each. So there's, there's four electrons or two pairs. Okay, so that's why it forms two double bonds. But the rest of it, they just share one um, electron each. And while the rest are, uh, oh, sorry, just two, while the rest are hydrogens. You have hydrogens up and down everywhere. It says that it's not drawn in the structure. Okay. And this one is also one of the um, commonly found um, acid or uh, oleic acid in in our kitchen. So this is cooking oil, or, or not just a pure oleic acid as cooking oil. So this is part uh, a component of a cooking oil. So these are all the things that you can find. Just an example. Okay. All right. So uh, just for our last 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 thing that we're gonna do today. We're just gonna go and do uh, pull everywhere again, just very quickly. Okay, so if you open your pull everywhere, so um, my first question is, how are you guys doing so far? Would you be able to like follow whatever I'm talking about, or are you a bit lost? Are you a bit confused? Or um, you know, um, so far so good. Okay, so um, yeah, just keep on coming. Interesting. So I'm hoping that uh, in the next coming weeks, uh, this is the style that I'm going to do. Okay. Uh, of course, hopefully without the advertisement, people are calling me and so on and so forth. So um, I apologize for that. Uh, lost me at the dipoles. Okay. So perhaps we can do a little bit more um, quizzes on the dipoles. So dipoles are basically uh, just interaction, the bonds or James bonds or molecular bond that and when you have a molecule, so a molecule is just a single molecule, okay? But when you have two molecules interacting with one another, that is what you call as bonds. And the type of bonds can be a dipole, can be different type of bonds, okay? So these are just, just an example. But um, of course, uh, I will try and recap this a little bit. Um, and of course, this lecture notes, uh, this lecture will, is, is recorded. I'm going to post it. I will post it in the uh, spectrum. So if you're a bit confused on the dipole side, you can just fast forward, look at the le uh, dipole lecture, and then try and um, re-listen re to what I've said. And um, if you're still confused, then by all means, let me know. You can just you know email me, or we do have a WhatsApp group, so you can just put it in the WhatsApp. Okay? All right. Yeah, so that's why um, I'm not really sure whether everyone has a basic chemistry or not. Um, I'm trying my best to go in very, um, you know, surface. But uh, again, not really uh, one thing. I'm used to teaching a high level. So going to a, a lower level, I'm not really sure whether what I'm trying to convey is um, can be acceptable, accepted by you guys. But uh, yes, this feedback is very good. So I'll try and make sure that in our next lecture, I will try and be as um, kind of like surface as possible. Okay. Okay. So next time I will ask you guys well, whether you guys have a chemistry background or not. Okay. But for today, I'm just going to skip. Okay. So um, let's try and do a little bit um, a test. Um, can you name one organic compound that you know um that is an organic compound so it can be anything um except cholesterol okay protein yes protein is an organic compound uh methanoic uh, we can consider as an organic compound yes ethane acid hexane um acid acid methane i would say well you can see a lot of engineering students nucleotide 
that's good. Another hexane, lipids, yes, carbohydrate, yes, fructose, methane, methane, fructose, uh, what else is there? Formic, uh, formic, you need to say whether it's formic acid uh, or, or some other formics. Okay, so these are all, um, okay, of course, this lecture will be shared with everybody. So for those who do not have a chemistry background that you think, you know, it might be difficult for you to um, understand what are these, okay, what are these, you can go back and see what are the definition of an organic compound and you can find individually what are, what, what are the words that your friend keep on writing, okay, ethanol, for example, now it's the biggest acid, it's one of the biggest, so you can just go and, and Google it a little bit and find the information that uh, confuses you but again if you are still confused then um, i'm happy to just you know help you guys however i, I can either by whatsapp or email or, or some other ways okay all right so um next one we will now go into the second question so this one is lecture one quiz one uh, or question one so move on to the second question which of these belong to the category atom? So we have uh, five options, carbon dioxide, the hydrogen oxide, oxygen, sucrose, or none of the above. So which of these belong to the category atom? So we have two options over here, oxygen and none of the above. So oxygen is reducing. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes it's fun to look at this because it's live. Um, so um, in, in one of my lecture, the students are kind of like um, competing with one another. Because um, you see the number is sometimes going up, sometimes going down. For business people, then probably, or, or finance, uh, if there's any finance students, then probably this is what you like. You, you like to see numbers going up and down. <laughs> okay. All right. How many responses I have now? I'm not sure. We have a few a few more minutes. So Chris now is gone. Okay. So um five, four, three, two, one. Okay. I will just keep this answer because otherwise it keeps on changing. Okay. So um this question is very general. I know I understand why you say it's oxygen, because if you look at the periodic table, oxygen can be O2, or if you're talking about oxygen gas. It can be O2. Okay, so. Oxygen as an O, then that one is also correct. So um, this type of question will not come out, but this is just a test. Um, as long as nobody picks up that, that or that, I'm fine. Okay, so meaning that at least you understand a little bit, you can, you'll be able to differentiate. At least you now know what is an atom. Atom is a single molecule, okay, just an O. Right, let's move to the third question. We have one more minute. Which of these is not a mixture? Click on the correct picture. Okay, so the first one we have, um, we have water. Second one we have, uh, either orange juice if you move to the right or if you go to the bottom we have a coffee and then uh, on the bottom right corner we have 100 plus with zero sugar so which one do you think is not a mixture so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three three twenty four twenty five twenty six so there's only twenty six of you left it's fine okay <laughs> somewhere in the middle okay all right so five more seconds four three two one i'm gonna deactivate the question okay so um there's only one answer which is the middle one <laughs> the middle person got it right yay Okay, um, again, this one, water is only right if it's a pure water, okay? Uh, but of course, um, if you compare between those four answers, then um, just the four answers without the middle one, of course, uh, the top left-hand side is the correct one. 
um, but you need to remember um, pure water is um, not a mixture but drinking water like shown in the picture are a mixture okay if you don't believe me find a water bottle and try and find the label over there okay you can see there's this label uh, that shows all the ingredients and you can see from there it's a mixture it's not a pure water okay um i think that is all for today it's already 12 50 i should have i should stop my lecture i do have a few more questions um but we will just continue next week just to test whether you still remember what what i'm talking about this week okay all right so that's all from me um thank you everyone stay safe and um thanks for having me take care thank you Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr.